Okay, good morning. I'm Raimo Niskanen from the OTP team at Ericsson. This is really my boss Kenneth's presentation. I'm here because I have a presentation about Jens Statham in the Crystal Lounge 1125, by the way. Um, he couldn't really motivate to fly to San Francisco for a 15 minute talk. So he gave it to me. It's my first time in the US, and then I got told that this is not the US, it's California. Uh, <laughs> First, I'd like to give you some trivia about the OTP team. As you know, we are from the, there, wake up. Ericsson, the telecom company from Sweden, you know. We are located in Sweden, or rather in Stockholm. This is really slow. To be more precise, a suburb of Kista outside Stockholm, a bit north. The, the name Kista once meant it's an ancient Swedish word that probably meant cattle pen, I guess, <laughs> once, or the pay place we keep the cattle. But now it's long forgotten, and any Swede can know that it spells like the word for a coffin. <laughs> um, <coughs> just a second. Uh, shista. Shista. Okay. So we are there in Shista, in Sweden's Silicon Valley and uh, sit in a house that's commonly known as the Crack House. And this is only because of its award-winning architectural design. So if for you in the back, you can see that it is a crack in the facade here, from the roof to the bottom. The entrance is at the bottom of the crack, and that is building of the year Stockholm 2010. Okay? I really want to know how the architect sold the, sold the idea to a big telecom company with a crack in the facade. But okay. <coughs> I'll talk about plan releases, something short about 20.3, the latest minor, preliminary about 21, coming and something about the longer terms. Um, okay. As you know, we have uh, one major release per year, three <coughs> planned, so to say, or more or less three correction packages and emergency packages as needed. Our main branch now. Uh, is the minor release 20.3. It was released two days ago, so I guess. The master branch next matter is for 21. I would like to urge you to evaluate our, um, there it is, our release candidates. If you find a bug in this one, you will not have the bug in the big release. So please, try them. <coughs> The next, is, it was next when the slide was written, but the recent mind release two days ago, the HTTP client can now use Unix domain sockets. We have more information in the crash dumps. You see it's quite a list. It's more and more accurate inf information in the crash dumps. Uh, a default has changed for SSH regarding execution of remote shells. Don't really know, but. We have had 18 external contributions since 22, since 20.2. Okay. For the next major branch about the Erlang VM, we have improved. Uh, some of the things are already in the, in the master branch and something are not done yet. But we have improved IOS scalability. We have introduced a new concept of distribution processes. Previously, it could only be a port that could be a distribution agent. Now a port can do that role. It's a new API in the VM for interacting with a process for the distribution protocol. Uh, it has been used already in the TLS protocol for rewrite in the same release. We have an optimization on 64-bit system that loads code in the lower four gigabytes, where we use 32-bit instructions instead. It, has, it gives 20 percent smaller code, smaller loaded code, less memory footprint. Um, the file driver has been written to use native functions instead. It's faster file operations and we can now open devices and FIFOs with the file driver. There's a new function in ETS where you can get the table ref from a table name. Um, the non-SMP emulator has been finally been removed. You can still use the flag plus S1 to get one scheduler. It's about the same, but uh, really, really needed to remove that a lot of code when we wrote dirty schedulers. 
it was becoming an if-def mess, really. Links and monitors have been optimized for scalability. The Gen server uses a monitor heavily. Every Gen server call is a monitor, so it's a welcome optimization. The compiler. <coughs> Uh, it does an interesting rewrite of tuples. If you match a tuple like that and then build it again, it will be reused as if you wrote code like I always write it. But it's done by the compiler. Th this is an optimization it used by the LXC team. They have had more, they, they have more optimizations. Um, in total, we get about 10% improvement in benchmarks. At least some benchmarks. Uh, I was a bit surprised to see that this was a compiler fix, but now a crash in an operator will show up as a crash in an operator, not in the function calling the operator. So now you see which operator in your function that crashed. Um, there's a new syntax for getting the stack trace. Uh, you have to use a syntax to pick up the stack trace instead of, on the, instead of the function Erl and get stack trace. There was a lot of reasons for this. Um, and you should have seen the, the debate. Small maps, creation of small maps with little keys has gotten up an optimization also. Uh, for the security applications, uh, SSL application will support DTLS in 21. As I said, the distribution protocol for TLS has been re rewritten to use these new ports, uh, new distribution processes. The code got smaller, fewer processes involved, fewer hops for each, mes each, message, each message. We're also removing unsecured ciphers uh, from the defaults. About the standard libraries, I think the number one here is welcome. We are introducing an API, a logger API. It's intended to be the API for logging. And then you can plug in a backend, <coughs> whichever backend you like, behind it. So you can decide, you don't need to create a dependency for a logger when you write a component. You can decide when you assemble your components which logger to use in the final product. Then you can use logger or our new improved logger that comes with this. We have a new module URI string to pass URI, parse URIs according to the standards as they are told. Um, and a new function in list module that takes a fun as a predicate. Regarding repositories uh, and applications, we will move out Orber and COS to a repository of its own, or their own. OTP MIBS will also get a an an new own repository. The INS application <coughs> will be split into new applications. FTP and TFTP will get new application and uh, HTTP cli client daemon will remain, for now at least. We are also removing dependencies uh, from <coughs> OTP applications to INETs by using this un new URI string model, mod module instead. On longer terms, <coughs> where we are rewriting the compiler to use single static assignment representation internally, uh, a compiler guy buzzword, I guess, this, this will make it possible to move optimization passes uh, that are now after the regi register allocation to before, and hopefully the register allocation will be much more successful of this. Now these passes tend to trip on each other's feet. Uh, the INET driver will be rewritten to use native functions also. See, it went so well with the, with the file driver, so we're trying it with the INET driver too. We have some vague optimizations and improvements regarding profiling tools. I don't really know. We're thinking about merging them, making them easy to use, something. We are going for heterogeneous distribution. That is, you, that you should be able to use both TLS and TCP, uh, or IPv4 and IPv6 in one cluster at the same time. We are still thinking about replacing global and about scaling to 100 nodes or more, but I think it's more thinking than doing right now. Uh, super efficient counters were on the table yesterday. We have an idea to use the native functions to create an array of uh, mutable counters. The goal is to beat ETS update counter thoroughly. 
because we, we have internal customers who are not happy with the speed of at each S update counter. The just-in-time compiler is now on its third promising track. Um, although we have not got an, a, a finished just-in-time compiler yet, it, this one is now getting close to hype in some applications, at least in benchmarks. Uh, but uh, the development have spilled over to virtual machines, optimizers, and compiler optimizations, so it's still been a good experience. We will get an implementation of the language server protocol called Erlang Language Server to make it possible to use, uh, to get language support for Erlang in uh, common editors, IDEs, and so, not just Emacs. Uh, we will support TLS 1.3 also, not too far away. As, an, as you know, we have uh, an anniversary this year, so can it pull out some numbers from R6B, I guess it was the oldest one you could find, 1999, and 20.2, the, the then latest. As you see, the compressed tar went from 6.7 megabytes to 83 megabytes, so I guess Joe was right about 6.7 megabytes is a big number, was it? You were talking about 20 kilobytes for a language, what was it? <laughs> a floppy disk, right. Okay, so we got complaints that 6.7 megabytes, that's too big. We tried to defend that with, it's better to have one package than have to explain to someone, now you need that, that, and that package. <coughs> you better have it as one package. And by the way, GCC is always also big, so this is not a problem. As now we're up to 83, and this is not a fair comparison really, because this includes documentation, documentation source, and test cases. Um, like with this Erlang code lines is also not fair, the test cases are included here, but these numbers are fair, so it, it's about a 30% increase, rough numbers. The, the source lines are without comments, by the way. So, okay, that's that. Now, okay, thank you. If you have any questions for Kenneth that I might be able to answer. I have one. How many pull requests from the community have you actually been able to merge? And who were the main contributors? Pull requests? No, I don't have <coughs> that in my head, sorry. But uh, I have this 18 pull requests, 18 contributions between 20.2 and 20.3. That includes pull requests. And, uh, oh, I think all are pull requests because some are just a spelling change of one letter, some are much bigger. <laughs> but 18 of them. Any other questions? Uh, regarding the language server, yes. has, is there some work already on that? I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> I pass it on. <laughs> At least there's serious talk. I'm just going to give it a detailed book. Would it ever be possible to pattern match on functions or modifies or funds in test cases? Uh, I have heard of no such plan, <laughs> unfortunately. I don't think patterns will make it as a first class citizen. That seems like a big work. But contributions are welcome, of course. Thank you. Thank you.